And so to round two, uh, the strengthometer of news. Uh, fingers on buzzers, teams. Here's the first one. It's the London Marathon. There was a row with the Guinness Book of Records about whether this nurse should get a record for doing the um, shortest time dressed as a nurse. And Guinness said she, she doesn't look like a nurse, because I think the people at Guinness had perhaps been watching different videos of nurses than the... <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> ..training ones now on offer. And she rightly appealed this, and she now is the quickest nurse in the business. I mean, Absolutely. this is your area, so, I mean, you must know. Well, this. yes, yes, it is my area, kind of. You held Obviously your not running. <laughs> 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 I did do a walk from Hull to Liverpool for sport oh, right. relief. Yeah, that was pretty amazing, cos that was, like, 20 miles a day for a week. And, and they did tell me that uh, I would burn 6,000 calories a day. Unfortunately, I ate 9,000 a day, <laughs> so... <laughs> This nurse is called <laughs> Jessica Anderson, yeah. and you were right. She was wearing trousers, OK? As you said, she was ineligible, because that's not what... She was wearing scrubs, what... wasn't she? Scrubs, it? that's right, yeah. Uh, according to Guinness, the guidelines said a proper nurse's uniform should include a pinafore and a cap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when did they write those rules? 1850s? <laughs> Actually, the Daily Mail helpfully provided us with a photo of a marathon-running nurse that falls within Guinness guidelines. Here we are. <laughs> <laughs> what actually uh, made them change their mind about her world record? Which well, didn't she appeal? She did. She pointed out the inherent sexism and they released a statement saying, our guidelines were outdated, incorrect and reflected a stereotype we do not in any way wish to perpetuate even though they just did. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers on buzzers, teams. Am I meant to be doing this again? I've kind of... Yeah. Oh, yeah, we've yeah. still got a bit more of this, yeah, haven't we? Thanks, yeah, Paul. Yeah. No, we like seeing it. Oh, what? Do you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, that, was, no, that was completely out of sync. Yeah, that was oh, terrible, wasn't it? Oh. No, hang on, hang on. No, no, no. That, that's, that, that, was that, that was quite bad. That was quite bad. You'd have to do it all again. This is a shambles. Hang, hang we might as well be called Steve. We can't replace her now. What are you talking about? Too late. Put the hammer down. My husband often says that to me. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Uh, fingers on buzzers, teams. <laughs> uh, this is a story about someone who stole a piece of Stonehenge. Mm. And you would have thought they would have noticed. I mean, look, there he is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> wasn't very subtle about it. Uh, he kept it and he took it to America and he's, he's finally returned it because after all these decades he's got bored of a bit of stone. Uh, his name's Robert Phillips. He stole it in the 1950s when a restoration team drilled metal supports into some of the stones to keep them in position. He's just turned 90. Kept it as a memento. Why is he returning it after 60 years? Was he sick of cars slowing down in front of his house to have a look? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he was worried about what would happen to it after his death. The sarsen stone... Don't ask me what a sarsen stone is, it just says it's a it's type of... one of, of... the stones. Mm. The different types. Mm, the standing okay. ones and the sarsen ones. And... Mm. The top ones. Mm. What a dork. <laughs> <laughs> You're not denying that's, it. That's a completely <laughs> different type of stone, which is uh, <laughs> around the perimeter. Do you like Stonehenge? I love Stonehenge. I used to go there when you could go up there and help in the building. What? 